Karolina Pliskova appears in her first career major final, taking on soon-to-be world number one Angie Kerber. The German is yet to drop a set, and with a win, she can become the world's first. She can become the first woman to win both the Australian China. Open and the U.S. Open in the same year since Martina Hingis in 1997. Oh boy. Oh, boy. And now, Katrina, if you will, the champion's trophy. How about that? Angie Kerber had never made a Grand Slam final before 2016. Won two out of three that year. Got to number one in the world, Chanda. What clicked for her? Well, remember, in the first round of the Australian Open, she saved match point and went on to win the title. The rest was history. And I think in big moments, Kerber just had a little bit of more of a base, more confidence, a clear sense of how she needed to be just a little bit more aggressive in big moments. I think that was the big change. And in that match against Karolina Pliskova, you know, she didn't panic. Even down a break in the third set, you know, she stepped up, tried to take a little bit more time from from Pliskova, Kerber has that ability to take the ball a little earlier, to flatten it out. And she did that in some key moments. And it was just the fight. It was just the will and the belief from Angie Kerber. And it couldn't have come at a bigger moment for her. Yeah, by the time the U.S. Open rolled around, Kerber so much more comfortable in those big matches. That was her third Grand Slam final at, of the same year. Pliskova had never played in one. So Pliskova, when she got closer in that third set, as Shannon said, up a break, 3-1, she froze a little bit, and that's when that experience of those big matches really took over for Kerber. Two big things for me changed everything for Kerber. One, fitness. Two, confidence. When she first came on tour, she wasn't <clears throat> the fittest player out there, and that is something that changed in the six or seven years until she was able to win her slams. 
And also, as Chanda said, the confidence. It took her a little longer to get in those big match situations. And then when she did, she realized in her mind, how do I need to play here? Do I need to be consistent or do I need to try and be a little bit more aggressive? It's a decision-making process for her because she can play both ways. She figured out a way to be just a little bit more aggressive in some big occasions, and it paid off huge for her in 2016. Lindsay, I think you hit the nail on the head there with her fitness. She's always been such a tough competitor, always been fairly mentally strong, that continued to improve over her career. But as she got into better shape, I think 2016 might have been the best shape we've seen her in. And the way she was able to compete all the way throughout those two weeks, especially in that final, she was so strong in that third set. And I think for her game style to be able to play at her highest potential, she just need to be an optimal athlete. You know, she's so good at defending, as we saw in those highlights against Pliskova. She uses her opponent's pace really well. But when she's feeling strong, she's able to generate her own pace of her own, especially on that forehand side. So it's, it's something to marvel at. We obviously saw her go on to have even more success after that with the, with the Wimbledon title. But um, just, a, just a remarkable match, especially being down a break in that third set. Yeah, pretty incredible. First German woman to get to number one in the world and win the U.S. Open since Steffi Graf, Hall of Fame legend. Uh, Lindsay, what is it going to take for Karolina Pliskova, who's been to number one in the world now but hasn't won a major, to get that Grand Slam title? For me, it's her belief. I, mean, I, I think that she's not sure sometimes how to play in those big moments. Is she going to be is she going for too much? Shot selection is a lot of it. She doesn't have a lot of natural spin. So if she's a little bit off or a little bit nervous, she starts making errors. She tried this year to, to get on a new foot with some new coaches, with Valverdu and Olga Savchuk. She's trying new things. I think ultimately, though, it comes down to the belief. Chanda, do you agree? I think it definitely does, especially when she just doesn't quite have the Lindsay Davenport ground strokes. I mean, she hits the ball well, but, you know, when it comes down to big moments in matches, that little bit of extra belief, that can mean the difference between a ball landing in, just missing, you know, having just a slight bit more margin to those beautifully struck balls, I think would do wonders for Pliskova. But certainly that's going to be the areas for her to grow in, the belief and doing it in big moments. And again, Tim, as you said, it comes down to the margin. When you hit the ball so clean and, you know, you keep the ball so high over the net, when you're playing well, as we saw her against Serena, she's going to be absolutely unstoppable. But when the errors come, they can, they can come fast and furious. Yeah, for years, people have been trying to replicate the LD groundies, and uh, it's just <laughs> harder than it looks, Chanda. Tough to do. Tough to do. <laughs> Impossible. Virtually. I think it's commercials. <laughs> commercials. Uh... <laughs> Pregnant pause. Okay. All right. We're going to a break here on Tennis Channel Live. The men's final still to come as Stan Wawrinka goes for the title at the U.S. Open.